In this video, I'm going to talk about basic probability for statistics. First, I'm going to talk about and define probability. Second, I'm going to talk about the probability of two independent events. Third, I'm going to talk about the probability of two dependent events. Let's start with probability. If 1 means that an event happened and 0 means that the event does not happen, probability lies in the middle. Probability deals with the uncertain where we don't know whether something is going to happen or not happen. For example, say we roll a dice and we're interested in the chance of rolling a 5. We use the notation shown here to describe probability. P represents probability and whatever comes in the parentheses after P represents the event that we're interested in. When we roll a six-sided dice, there are six equally likely outcomes. One of those outcomes is a five. So our probability of rolling a five is one over six, or 0 0.166, repeating. Here's another example. Say we draw a random card from a deck of playing cards, and we want to know the probability that we'll draw a king. In this case, there are 52 equally likely outcomes. Four of those outcomes would be kings. So our probability of drawing a king is 4 over 52, or 1 over 13. Next, I'm going to talk about the probability of two independent events. An example would be if we rolled two dice. The outcome of one dice is independent of the outcome for the other dice. Say we want to know the probability that we're going to roll a 5 on both of our dice. This symbol in the middle here is called an intersection. It looks like an upside down U and means AND. So this reads, what's the probability that our first roll will be a 5 and our second roll will be a 5? One way to think about the probability of two events is to visualize a Venn diagram where the circle on the left represents the probability of event A the circle on the right represents the probability of event B, and the overlap in the middle represents the intersection between A and B. The formula for calculating the probability of A and B when A and B are independent is the probability of A times the probability of B. So using our example, the probability of rolling a 5 on both of our rolls is equal to the probability of rolling a 5 on the first roll times the probability of rolling a 5 on the second roll, which is equal to 1 over 6 times 1 over 6, or 1 over 36. We also might be interested in the probability of rolling a 5 on our first roll or our second roll. This is called a union, and it's represented by the symbol shown here. The probability of A or B happening is equal to the probability of A plus the probability of B minus the intersection between A and B. When we're interested in the union between two events, we want to count the events where only A happened, which is the blue, the events where only B happened, which is the yellow, and the events where both A and B happened, which is the green. But we don't want to count that intersection between A and B twice, which is why we subtract it once in the formula. So back to rolling our dice. The probability that we roll a 5 either on our first roll or our second roll is equal to the probability that we roll a 5 on our first roll plus the probability that we roll a 5 on our second roll, 
minus the probability of rolling a five on both rolls. So that equals one over six plus one over six minus one over 36, which equals 11 over 36. Next, I'm gonna talk about the probability of two dependent events. In order to understand the probability of two dependent events, it's important to first talk about what we call conditional probability. Conditional probability occurs when the likelihood of one event happening depends on another event. And the way we talk about it, we say the probability of an event given that another event has occurred. We use the notation shown on this slide. So if event one is A and event two is B, the conditional probability of A given B is written as shown here. As an example, say we have a group of 10 people dressed in different colored clothing as shown here. Say we're interested in the probability that somebody is wearing a green shirt given that they're wearing blue pants. These are all the people wearing blue pants. There are five of them. Two out of the five are wearing a green shirt. This means that the probability of wearing a green shirt given that somebody's wearing blue pants is two out of five or 0 0.4. The formula for conditional probability, A given event B, is the intersection between A and B divided by the probability of B. Let's see how this plays out in our example of different colored clothing. The probability that somebody is wearing both blue pants and a green shirt is two out of 10. The probability that somebody is wearing blue pants is 5 out of 10. So if we plug these numbers into our formula, the probability of wearing a green shirt given that somebody is wearing blue pants is 0 0.2 over 0 0.5, which is equal to 0 0.4. A more true to life example would be something like this. We might be interested in knowing the probability that somebody is going to get breast cancer if they have a particular genetic allele. If we have information on the probability that somebody has the genetic allele and the probability that somebody has both the genetic allele and breast cancer, we can calculate the probability of breast cancer given the genetic allele using the formula I showed before. In this case, it would be 0 0.08 divided by 0 0.1 or 0 0.80, which means that if with these hypothetical numbers, if somebody has this particular genetic allele, they have an 80% chance of developing breast cancer. Now, remember that when two events were independent and we were interested in their intersection, we use this formula, the probability of event A times the probability of event B. When the two events are dependent, we make a simple adjustment to our formula. Instead of the probability of A times the probability of B, we have the probability of A given B times the probability of B. Here's an example of why that small difference between the formulas is really important. Say that in our example of different colored clothing, we assumed that the probability of wearing a green shirt was independent of the probability of wearing blue pants. We would use our first formula, the probability of wearing a green shirt times the probability of wearing blue pants, which is three out of 10 times five out of 10, or 15 over 100, which equals three over 20. But we know just by counting that the actual probability of wearing a green shirt and blue pants is two out of 10, not three out of 20. And this difference is because 
people who wear blue pants are more likely to be wearing a green shirt than people who do not wear blue pants. With two dependent events, we might also be interested in their union. For example, what's the probability that somebody is wearing blue pants or a green shirt? It turns out that we use the same formula that we did when the two events were independent. And the reason we can do that is because this part of the formula that involves the intersection between A and B is going to be slightly different based on whether the two events are independent or dependent. So let's use our example again. Out of 10 people, six of them are wearing either a green shirt or blue pants. If we use our formula, we need to look at the probability of blue pants plus the probability of a green shirt minus the intersection between blue pants and green shirts. The probability of wearing blue pants is 5 out of 10. The probability of wearing a green shirt is 3 out of 10. And the probability of wearing both blue pants and a green shirt is 2 out of 10. So if we put all of these numbers into our formula, we get 5 out of 10 plus 3 out of 10 minus 2 out of 10, which equals 6 out of 10. To recap, we covered three important formulas. The first is for the union between two events, and it's the same formula regardless of whether the two events are dependent or independent. What does change is the formula for the intersection between the two events. In the case of dependent events, the probability of both A and B happening is equal to the probability of A times the probability of B conditional on A. When the two events are independent, the probability of A and B happening is simply the probability of A times the probability of B.